Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And today I'm here at First Friday's Art Walk here on Broad Street to spread the message of freedom. So I'm here, I've got myself set up, and I'm ready to actually help change the paradigm shift to a free and voluntary society. You already know? I already know. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Would you like to say something to the camera? Tell them what you know, what you hate about government, all the way they're interested in hurting your life. I already know. <laughs> I live in New York. I already know. Thank you, man. Yeah, Thank that's you. all I needed to say, right? Exactly. Let's turn to our community and turn away from that government. I, I moved from here. I moved to New York. I already know. Yeah. Good man. Guess, good yeah. man. He already knows. Or shouldn't that be amoral? Immoral. Amoral. Oh, or, or you could be Chris? Without morals. Without morals? No, no. We, well, the government has no morals. It doesn't have any morals. Great point. Yeah, exactly. They're quite hypocritical. Say again? They're quite hypocritical. They are, they are, they yeah, are. We do, you can. We exactly, do, you yeah. You're not allowed to steal, we'll call it taxes. You're not allowed to murder, we'll call it organized war. They call it a war on drugs, but in reality it's a war on people. Oh, that, oh, yeah, yeah, you get it, yeah, yeah. It's pretty much the contradiction that they, they teach us, you know, when we're young. So they, they mix up the abstract and concrete concepts. We'll, we'll spray your, your food with Roundup, but you don't have the right to know. Right, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Please, yeah, continue spreading the message. Please, you can tell other people. Well, I'm, on the, I'm on the Monsanto thing hardcore. People tell me to go away and they're tired of hearing about it. Right. Everybody needs to know. You know how many people don't know about Monsanto? A lot. You know, I know. About Monsanto? Yeah, I know about Monsanto. I know about the Monsanto Act, uh, the extra special privilege that they gave them to escape personal liability for their actions. Right. You know, you know about Monsanto's uh, actions in Anderson, Alabama. No, they, no, please. They pumped, they, uh, they poisoned the whole city of Anderson, Alabama, with PCB runoff, which they used to be a chemical company, and they made PCBs, which was. Uh, a lubricant for electrical engines and they allowed their factory to run off the PCBs into the stream right. and it's poisoned all of Anderson, Alabama. And since it was for black people, the government and, and Monsanto do the whole time with it. Yeah. But finally the, the, the people of Alabama won a $700 billion lawsuit against uh, Monsanto, but Monsanto still didn't work. No, 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 of course not, of course not. And that's pretty much what we're here advocating for. If you get rid of the idea of a government, there's no such thing as Monsanto, there's no such thing as a corporation. All there are is a piece of paper back and forth by the government, right? right? Without the government, you have no corporations, you have no Monsanto, the credit charge to create a monopoly on patents, on copyrights, on, on trademarks. All right, I, I got it. Yeah, no, pleasure, no, great we're, talk. We're on the same page. <laughs> All right, man, take good care. Well. I think you have to participate. Why? Because right now that this is our system. It's not, well, you don't and have so, a system. Yeah. You know, I hear what you're saying, but I mean, I'm an advocate, so I try to encourage people to show up, to speak up for their rights. Speak up their rights to who? Well, depending upon what it is. Right, but who are you speaking it to? Well, I work in... Better service that's not abusive and harmful to the people that are paying their salaries. 
You know, I'm very much for helping the poor. But again, you don't have the freedom to where 40, 50 percent of your income is stolen to direct it to where you you feel best could be served and used. Yes, and by definition, anarchy means without rulers, right? Uh, like and science, panions and ions. Uh, anarchy means uh, and means without. Archy means rulers. Like monarchy means one ruler. Anarchy means without rulers. We can have rules. There's just no need for political rules. We can have communities of preferences. We can have an apartment complex that's 420 friendly. One right across the street. That's not. So what do you do? Are you an artist? Are you? Yeah, well, I do some art on the side, but for me, I feel like uh, this is probably the biggest, uh, I guess, important issue for me to actually take up uh, and to kind of to let go. I mean, again, so what if they legalize, for example, cannabis, they legalize something for tomorrow, how long did that take, right? That's not a measure, 75 years even for cannabis, that's not a that's not a measure of success. You have to gain one scrap of more freedom, but you have lost so many others in the same amount of time, you know, through the National Defense Authorization Act, through the Patriot Act, through, I mean, a reform is just another way of saying that the last 99 attempts the government has tried to solve problems has just never worked. And for me, it's like to, to look in the face of that rationalization that it will never work, and let's, let's stop and just turn, give all that energy and time and commitment and, and, uh, and our resources to our community instead. Right? Let's not invest that into their political campaigns. Let's not invest that into government altogether. You know, let's let go of the, I mean, again, you realize that they have a monopoly on the services. And whenever you have a monopoly, the quality always goes down. Um, you, even to the, you can look at even uh, the monopoly on the dollar you have today. has lost over 97% of its value since they monopolized in 1930. Yeah, uh, and, and at first, the poor the worst, because there's no incentive to save. Every dollar you hide underneath your bed mattress depreciates in value because you have no freedom to compete. Uh, you have no freedom to provide a better service or competition. And if you tried, the government would just throw you into a cave. Right? And it's just, and that's, that's pretty much the direction I'm, I want to go. You know, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to die a slave. I don't want to keep begging for my freedom. So I don't want my children to be born with social security prison that we're going to on their feet. You know, I want to, I, I want to go to that which founded on a, on a principle of non-violence that we already have these values and go in that direction. Now, once there would always be problems, at least we can find ways to, to improve upon those problems to get to a better place. That only knows how to keep the good in, uh, driving us into more tax. <laughs> you know, driving us into more of this uh, tax, tax slavery that they have. You know, for us, they always see us as nothing but tax cattle. You know, that's why you have all these new uh, parking meters going up. That's why you have all these cars being booted. It's unsustainable. You see the, uh, the bankruptcy of Detroit. It's inevitable. Every government controlled city ends up becoming bankrupt. But you, I'm so happy actually you mentioned that it's just anarchy. Yes, it is. Uh, so it's um, pretty much it's not just state violence because it's against not just an arbitrary rule to uh, dictate, uh, to force your opinions on other people. Uh, it's against the violence we do to each other, and especially the violence that's done to children. You know, you have to universalize that, otherwise it becomes a problem. Um, so let me uh, give you a yeah. This is uh, an energy pamphlet, peaceful parent pamphlet, and volunteer. Nice. Okay. <laughs> uh, I like what you're doing. I yeah. mean, you're, you're engaging the conversation. With I like that. Thank you. Thank you. I, I wish we were, we were, we were like in the right city. I think the rich would be in the right city. This is where I want to go, right, right where we respect and, uh, the individual, you know? Yeah. What needs to happen is having basic respect. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for asking. You're the first person. <laughs> well, so far. <laughs> Have a good, have a great, happy first Friday. You guys curious? I'm curious. Yeah. Actually, I actually have my first question for you is. Well, uh, Sam, right here. Oh, so, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right here, right here. All right. Are you an ANCAP or are you an ANCOM? Uh, I'm just an anarchist. So regardless of your uh, preference for the hyphenation, uh, it's regardless. Whatever kind of uh, preference or communities you want, as long as it's voluntary. As long as it's a freedom to, you know what, I don't like this community or this kind of community of preferences, I'd rather go to that one. As long as it's voluntary, as long as you have the freedom to remove yourself if you want to, anything goes. Right? As long as you're not using violence yeah. to force any idea or opinion, whatever you want. If you don't want to use money, great. You can trade and barter whatever system you want. If you want to use money, you know, you have a good understanding that there's a monopoly on currency, for example, since 1913, 
You know, you look at Bitcoin, for example, as an interesting digital way to, to use currency to trade as the monetary value, to protect the value of systems to trade and barter. Uh, yeah. Then great, go, go for it. Right. Uh, but actually, I'm very surprised that you know uh, that's just, that there's actually a difference between the two. What's, what's your history? What, uh... Uh, well, me and my friend here, we used to, we come from Chapel Hill. Yeah. All right. We're just we're visiting here because my dad has a book signing in the area. Okay. And walk down the street, and we used to work at an Erica's bookstore. Right. And um, uh, I lean towards Ancom syndicalists. Right. So I was just curious. I saw a Libertarian. I'm like. Okay, what, what, what's this going to be all about? All right. And so, all right, well, may I ask? All right, so may I, may I start that presentation? Are you sure? Go all right. Ahead. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, I'm going to ask you guys three simple questions and then uh, very briefly just describe the hidden violence and immorality of government. In your day to day life, so you guys use violence to solve your personal problems. How are you? Yeah. Well, all right, let's define violence well, well, then. Yeah, because yeah, sometimes yeah. violence yeah. can be ambiguous. Right, yeah, right. it's very good to define the term. Violence is defined as placing a person in an involuntary position without their consent or choice, i.e., rape, murder, theft, and assault. Right? I don't no. think I do any no. of those things. Yeah. <laughs> all right, great. And the second question would be with the exception of self defense of yourself and others, would you consider it wrong and immoral to initiate that violence? Well, yeah. Yeah, okay, great. And then the last question would be would you also consider it wrong and immoral to violently enforce your ideas onto other people? Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like if you didn't like what I had yeah, to say, well, right, you can right. ignore me and walk away. Right. They're like threatening you, grab a guy, right. or like, yeah, okay, great, oh, perfect. Right. So right. just tell me your day to day life. You have a morality of non violent solutions you apply and use to solve your personal problems. And you have this more integrity against that violence. And as a community of individual people here in Richmond, we're told that the only way we can affect any kind of change, make any kind of difference is your government, to the state. Right. And, and that's their voting. So people vote uh, with their ideas and trying to solve problems and affect the elected politician. That politician, his or her job is to legislate those ideas into law. And then those laws of ideas are backed and enforced by the police at gunpoint. Right? You could take cannabis, for example. If I were to smoke a plant, I'd be kidnapped, arrested, thrown through a cage, a prison. And at any point of refusal, yeah, resistance, or agree those ideas are tried to escape. I commit more violence than sometimes shots, murder. And at the same time, it's even funded the more violence. Because at no point can you say, I don't want to fund, I want to help the poor, but I don't want to fund war. You right. have no freedom of economic choice. You have to give me your money. You have to give up your property. You have to pay your taxes. Because if you didn't have a freedom of economic choice, they wouldn't threaten you to send you to another cage if you didn't pay your taxes. Right? And that's the hidden violence behind government. It only knows how to solve problems in one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of a use of violence to solve any problems. Versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that we already share yeah. to try to find solutions, right? To find right. answers. And then you can really get down to solving, you know, actual crimes, not victimless crimes. Right. Like yeah. Yeah. Cannabis, etc. Right, you can have an apartment complex across the street that's 420 friendly, great. Yeah. One across the street that's not. Right. Why? Perfectly fine. It's, it's however you want to live and you don't have to have coercion keeping you down, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's really it. You, know, you recognize that the state has a monopoly on law, they have a monopoly on security, they have a monopoly on roads, on schools, on currency. They have a monopoly on that and every time you have a monopoly, the, current, the value in it the, uh, always goes down, right? So that, no, this is really awesome that you guys uh, really... And, and of course, the main problem with representative government is the fact that the representative is going to represent their ideas and you're basically saying, well, I subscribe closely to your ideas, but it won't ever be 100%. Right. And in a voluntary system, it will be 100% your ideas and not theirs, which is close enough. Right. You, you will actually use our real voice. They want to trick us into thinking that our voice is a piece of paper to chat as a lever. Right? They're afraid if we actually use our real voice, we actually connect. They're afraid if we actually use our real voice, we, re we realize we actually share these fundamental values for a free and voluntary society. That we can have communities of preferences. We can have rules without political rulers. Right? And that's right. what they're afraid of. Because then when we actually reach out and talk to each other, we realize we never needed a government to begin with. We never needed that status control, that status violence. This is great. No, I'm, I'm so glad uh, you guys came out here. No, yeah. This is wonderful. Yeah. I'm, I'm Cal, by the way. I'm Clay. Clay? And I'm you're, Nathan. You're Nathan? Pleasure to meet you, Nathan. So, uh, anarcho syndicalist. Yeah. Cool, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, could could I, you tell me more about the philosophy? I, I do a YouTube channel, Liberate okay, RBA. Right. So pretty much, I'm pretty much, I'm an anarchist. I have a lot of friends who are ANCOPs, anarcho-syndicalists, so all variety. And again, for me, I'm trying to let go of the color dividing and the hyphenation. We can coexist. Let go of the the end game is is the state. We can have our communities of preferences. Well, I mean, the whole point behind syndicalism is the fact that labor unions are basically the the way in which you organize. Okay, you have workers bound together as workers, like let's say a whole bunch of miners, okay? The miners can come together as a labor union and they don't need management, okay? Right. They can work as a co-op of miners. It's it's an economic system and then when you add in that anarcho part, you're basically taking the anarcho system of 
government and adding it on to that sort of economic way of doing things through cooperatives. And I, I like the idea of cooperatives. I don't think that we need management telling us what to do, telling a worker what to do. Uh, the workers can decide for themselves from uh, business to business, I guess. I, I mean, I don't really have another word for I guess from co-op to co-op. Right. The workers can decide for themselves how they want to manage their business, how they want to distribute the funds, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, what the rules on the job are. And basically everyone can make their own choice and you don't need some big boss sapping wages from the workers. The workers can have this money for themselves. Right. Yeah, I, you guys have, uh, I mean, I'm not saying like you guys, I've seen a lot of very successful anarcho syndicates bookstores. Right. And so for me, I've seen how like the cooperative system works. Yeah. And for me, that's, that's awesome. Right. Right. For me, that, that's great. Uh, I guess for me, I'm just trying to get rid of the divide. Like, let's let's kind of unite as under, underneath the anarchy banner, whatever color you are, it doesn't matter. Right. As long as we're not using violence to solve our problems, we can coexist. Yeah. We can get to that point. You know, the end game is freedom. Right? Well, well my, my one problem was that at the books we used to work at, uh, the, the big problem was the fact that there were there were some anarcho-capitalists there. And the thing is that was mainly leftists. There were there are an anarcho-syndicalists, ANCOMs, just communists. And usually the ANCAPs would get left out. And I, I, I usually felt really bad for the NCAPs because, well, that, that, that's a problem because we're all radicals and yeah. individually we're not going to be able to do anything. Right. We all we all share the basic ideas on some level. So first we should work together to get these ideas in place and then we can decide amongst ourselves what the rules are going to be right. between each of us. If the ANCAPs want to do their thing, that's fine. The, the Cindy's can go over there and they can do yeah, what they Yeah, exactly. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, and that's, that's pretty much what I'm, I'm trying to go out here and talk about. I usually don't go much into depth into like uh, the syndicates and all that stuff because a lot of people don't know about the Hacker Nation or the history behind all of this stuff. But for me, a lot of this stuff a lot of people even have with, um, with the system today is like what people don't realize without a government there's been no such thing as a corporation. Right. Uh, you want I mean, a corporation is nothing but a piece of paper that allows uh, the, you know the, the person to escape personal liability, to personal responsibility for their own actions. You know. Yeah. Uh, so without a government, no corporation it goes back to the individual who's responsible for their own actions and choices. You know. And if they want to form a cooperative, I have, I have a lot of friends here in Richmond too, who are into interested in, in the commune kind of lifestyle yeah. and into the cooperative way of uh, of life uh, without monetary system and balance. That's perfectly fine. You know. It's something. It used to be kind of like that a long time ago without the government involvement. People used to trade services, and you know, uh, you know, a farmer trading in you know, a couple, yeah. a couple of eggs for, for some health services. You know, it used to be that way. So I mean, that's that's pretty much the direction I, I want to go. Right. Yeah. And a, a big problem comes from the fact when people say, "Oh, well, it doesn't work." Well, you can look at a situation like Barcelona, 1936, where the anarchists had their own commune in Barcelona, and it worked out just fine. The fact, the problem is that they lost the civil war, and well, no one remembers it now because yeah, they're yeah, the losers. Yeah. Well, I guess I guess for me that's my biggest fear, to be honest. Uh, to to actually to help shape to change the paradigm shift before it gets to that revolution, to, to that war. Because when it gets to that point, everything's lost already. Because the only thing people know at that point is how to use violence to solve the problems, how to yell at buildings, steal at each other, and hurt each other, shoot each other, and then the matrix reboots, right? And so I'm trying to help change uh, to change the, the culture to actually have these conversations with each other. You know, it's not just the violence we're against; it has to be the violence we're against each other. The violence done to children, for example, banking only teaches children the violence. Way to solve problems when they grow up. You know, perfect for the state to indoctrinate them into what they know how to do best, right? So it's pretty much trying to, to push these ideas forward together and unite unite these balance to be sure already and trying to get to, to that state of anarchy. You know, anarchy, to be honest, is not a, a place or a destination, right? It's a way of life, right? It's a way of that more and more integrity is not, it's completely optional. But that's really the only way we're going get to get, get to that point that we want to go to. You know, that there's no morality. And that's why I'm talking about the immorality of the government because it contradicts that we really believe and value. And for the most part, everyone I talk to already hold these values together. Yeah. You know, they just didn't know, I guess, I mean, I myself didn't know. You know, I myself was misled. You know, um, so it's, uh, I, I guess that's pretty much this conversation, uh, I guess, we're having here today. This is really great. This is wonderful. Uh, no, thank, thank you guys for coming out. Uh, would you guys be interested in pamphlet? Sure. Yeah? yeah. All right. Like I wasn't looking at the camera. That's the problem. Oh no no no! It's no, okay. I, I, it's okay. I, yeah. All right. So uh, voluntarism and what is anarchy? All right. Uh, although you guys already have a great understanding, of that, I think that's wonderful. So we were running an organization called Liberate RVA, yeah. Liberate our community from the idea that violence is set us free. 
And that's uh, your YouTube channel? Yeah, no. YouTube channel, you can find me on. My name is on here, Cal Molinay. You'll find all the information on there, but it's pretty much going in that direction, right? Yeah. For me, personally, I'm trying to, not, not, not that I'm saying ANCAP, anarchist, and it's bad right. ideas. I'm just trying to get rid of the color differentiation. Right. I want to go, I mean, it hasn't gone anywhere in the past several decades, right? Yeah. The idea is, is like, I haven't seen any measure of success in that and bringing me closer to freedom. For me, I'm kind of, I'm, I want to be done with the divisionist, and I want to go to uniting us and trying to finally achieve the end game of freedom and the state, and we can finally achieve and have real freedom in our lifetime. It, it's funny, because we were at a, we were at a May Day rally in, um, in Chapel Hill, and I brought a big banner that said, Unite the Left, so with yeah. um, all the symbols of different anarchist and communist organizations. This is the exact thing I was saying. <laughs> this is the exact thing I was saying, so it's really funny that we found you on the street here. Yeah, no, this is great, this is awesome. No, no, so please, I mean, if you guys want to keep continue uh, talking or wondering for, for the art that's great. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to keep recording more conversations. If you guys want to talk more to people about this stuff, you guys are more welcome to join. All right, well, we'll have to see how long we Yeah, yeah, keep, keep it going. Yeah, I'll be here for the next hour or so. so. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Good to meet you. At the same time, it's even fun to more violence because there's no point you say, I want to help the poor, but I don't want to fund war. Correct. You have no freedom of economic choice. You have to give your money. You have to give up your property. You have to pay your taxes. Because if you didn't have a freedom of economic choice, they wouldn't threaten to send you to another absolutely. cage if you didn't absolutely. pay your taxes. Uh, absolutely. Amen. Amen, buddy. <laughs> Perfect. And that's, right. and that's the hidden violence behind government. Absolutely. It only knows how to solve problems absolutely. through one way, a singular way. And that's, just, uh, that's the use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of non-violent solutions we're applying use in our lives. Right. So I'm pretty much out here trying to talk and trying to connect with my community, turn it to our community, turn it away from government. Turn Good it for you, absolutely. I've turned away, so I'm... Oh, great. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> I'm on your page. I am on your page. Nice, nice. Absolutely. Good job. Thank you, thank you. Go ahead. All right. I'm going to ask you three simple questions and very briefly discuss the hidden violence and morality of government. All right. In your day-to-day -day life, to use violence to solve your personal problems. In your day-to-day -day life, to use violence to solve your personal problems. No, go ahead. With the exception of self-defense, would you consider it wrong and immoral to initiate that violence? Yes. Would you also consider it wrong and immoral to violently enforce your ideas onto other people? Sometimes that has to be done. Well, like if you didn't like what I had to say, you could walk away and ostracize me. But if I grab you and threaten me, no, you have to listen to me. You have to do what I have to say. Now I'm violently enforcing my ideas, right? Would you, instead of reason and discussion. At some point, I have to do and, and what, uh, what, what situation? Except for self-defense? Um, that, like if I was annoyed for long enough, I would have to go ahead and put a bullet in jail. So it's someone who annoyed you, didn't like their discussion, you couldn't walk away, you will murder that person yourself? No, what I'm saying is on some occasions... No, no, I'm trying to understand because if you're trying to tell me that it's someone who disagrees with you, no, this is very important because actually it's good to front for me to find someone. If someone who disagrees with you, you find annoying, you will shoot that person. I some artwork, but you are... No, 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 you will shoot someone in the face. You would take their life away because they disagree with you? Because for me, that's very important for me to understand. <laughs> no, I'm, a, I'm a third generation anarchist, so you don't have to. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah no, great. No, 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 pleasure no, to meet you. Yeah, yeah. For yeah, me, no, without yeah, rulers. Great, and great rules great without father, rulers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right, please, let me give you some. Pick a flower. Yeah, uh, no, I'm, I'm old school anarchist. I don't join groups. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. For me, it's. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah no, I, like I said, third generation. I'm from the Middle East. Well, this is. Oh, yeah, really? Okay, oh, great. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah no, no. My, that's my wonderful. family came from a long line and don't believe in none of that bullshit. Nice, man. Uh, yeah, no rulers. No rulers. I don't, I, I don't need any. Pleasure, man. Cooperation. Thank you. Anarchy is about cooperation. It's about the opposite of a ruler. It's not about a group ruling oligarchy. It's not chaos. It's about cooperation. And there's lots of examples in the world. And now we can talk about. But good luck. Thank you. No, appreciate it. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for talking. Thanks for telling the truth.